Here's something else that this man, this malefactor, would have witnessed. He would have heard the Lord Jesus speak, or the Lord Jesus spoke when he was on the cross. Seven saying. Here's one that would really make me think that he thought there was something special. The Lord Jesus, after those cruel men had done so much to him, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, we are not told in the Gospels how much this thief, this criminal, knew about the Lord Jesus, what he had performed before, what kind of a man he was in his, in his previous life. But I would like to think, as I think of, of Paul's uh, description of the Lord Jesus, if I can put it that way, that the things concerning the Lord Jesus, they were not done in a corner. It was on public display. People knew. And we would read words like this, that his fame spread throughout all of certain parts of that country there. People knew about the Lord Jesus. He had done many wonderful works. He had saved others. So here's a malefactor nailed to his cross. And next to him is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And here's a man who comes to understand now for the first time. The person that is next to me, he is perfect and shouldn't be there. He has done nothing amiss. No accusation could be leveled against him that would have convicted him of any crime. Nothing. Perfect. And what was written above him? See, above those two criminals, they would have had a plaque above their heads too with their charges written, what they were guilty of. And here's a plaque above the head of the Lord Jesus. This is Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. No crime. So here's a man now, this malefactor. There's a change with him. He understands now, oh, this man is perfect. He is coming to understand that this man on the center cross is very different from myself. For his own sin is convicting him and condemning him, and he knows it, that what he had done, his sin, had put him to the cross, as well as the other thief. It was their sins. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, we read verses like, uh, words like this. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. So this man, this malefactor, the one who had a change, he now comes to understand what I am getting on this cross is exactly what I deserve. I deserve the death penalty for my sin. I am here because I deserve to be here. But the one on the center cross, he has no sin. Why is he there? See the man here saying in verse 41, and we indeed justly, speaking about that condemnation, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And then I would like us to think about how he goes on. He says to Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Here is a man, and his language before was something like this, if thou be the Son of God, if thou be the King of Israel, if thou be the Savior, the one who saved others. See, it was a language of doubt. It was a language in which he was simply expressing his own opposition to that man on the center cross. Fulfilling what the Word of God says about all who are still in their sins, their enmity, opposition to God. 
But here's a change now. He says to him, Lord, remember me. So the one who before was just looked down upon by him and was reared upon and mocked, he now calls him Lord. What a change. Friend, tonight what we have here is a man who understands his own sinful condition. He understands that he did everything but do justice to the person of the Lord Jesus. He understands that he had set himself against the Lord Jesus Christ, put himself in a position of enmity with the Lord Jesus. He understands that. And now he turns to him, calls him Lord. He is giving the Lord Jesus his rightful place. As the king as the Son of God, as the Messiah, the Sent One, as the Savior of the world. The rightful place. You know what this man is really doing? He has found place for repentance. He has now put himself where he belongs to, where, where he ought to be, where, where he belongs. As a guilty sinner before God, Receiving just exactly what he deserved. Friend tonight, I wonder if you could see yourself in that place. As one who is condemned, as one who is a sinner before God, as one who is on the brink of eternity, as one who is so close to death, as one who is so close to hell, and a judgment for sin to come. This man was there. Very little time left, and he knew it. A friend tonight, we don't know how much time is left to you and me. You know what? And that should add much more of a sense of urgency to the matter of your soul's salvation tonight. We have no guarantee of seeing tomorrow. This man, he was staring death in the face. He was on the cross, not much time left. He knew that eternity was close, and he knew that he was a sinner, and he received the condemnation, the judgment that he deserved. Friend tonight, do you understand that if not saved, if you're not saved tonight, that you are facing a lost eternity, hell and the lake of fire, no heaven, my friend, because a person must be born again, must be saved in order to go to heaven. No other way. But we by nature are sinners, sinners against God. No rights to heaven at all. We must be saved. Are you saved? Do you know your sins forgiven? Do you know that your condemnation, your judgment, another too? You know what this man here, when he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom, he understands something. That the one who is on the center cross, if there is any salvation for him at all, it must be through this man. And it makes me think of the apostle Peter as he could speak to his own countrymen and through the word of God really is speaking to every one of us tonight. That neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Salvation can only be found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. This man here understood it. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Friend tonight, what are you building on for going to heaven? What is it? A baptism? following a certain religion, some kind of a creed, or maybe just your own way. Friend, according to the word of God, there is only one way that leads to heaven, and that is through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. No other way but him. Where is it? Here. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here is a man, he understands that full well. I am now in light of eternity. I am, I am a lost soul 
but the one on the center cross can save me. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Here's what the Lord Jesus said to him. Verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So this man now, we read nothing else about him. We read nothing else about the other malefactor either. You know what, this man, I would like to think of it this way. There's nothing else mentioned. Conversations end it. This man, he just received all that he needed to be at peace and rest, looking forward to an eternity in the kingdom of God. And he was no more scared of death. He was no more scared of what happened to him once his life would come to an end. And it wasn't very far off. At peace and rest altogether, saved, my friend. Looking forward to the glories of heaven to be together with the Lord Jesus in paradise. What did he have? You know what he had? He had the word of God. Sound strange? The Lord Jesus, God manifest in the flesh, he had given this man his word, a promise. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You know what, friend? And my time is done. I don't have anything else than this for my eternity. I simply have the word of God to give me the assurance that I have everlasting life, forgiveness of sin, my condemnation, my judgment that I deserve, by the way. And I know that. That it was laid upon the Lord Jesus that he died for my sins on Calvary's cross. And John 3 and 36 that verse tells me this, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, present possession. A person that trusts Christ for the eternal welfare of his or her soul has everlasting life and has it upon believing. For the rest of life, for all of eternity, never to be lost. Friend tonight, how does that verse in John 3, 36 continue? He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God, the condemnation of God, the judgment of God against one's sin. It's abiding on him. Friend, this passage here in Luke 23, really as I think of it, it divides all of humanity into two groups. Those that are saved, those that are lost. Those that are going to heaven, those that are going to hell. There is one man here, friend, there's no indication whatsoever that he ever found place of repentance and got saved. The one malefactor. And if he went out in, into eternity in that condition, he is in hell today. But there's the other. He trusted Christ. And he received the word of God, a promise that he could build upon. Absolute trustworthy. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Another is in heaven. Where are you located tonight, friend? You're still in the land of the living, if I can put it that way. Not saved? You can be saved tonight if you would trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior.